the web of conspiracy. Here is your host, Adam Webb. Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of the Web of Conspiracy. I am your host, Adam Webb. It's great to be back with you uh, this week, finally, after a uh, much longer than intended absence. Uh, once again, uh, my apologies uh, for the lack of a show now for almost, well, basically about a month now. Um, certainly unintended. Um, uh, I knew I was going to have some scheduling issues in October, and I knew it was going to be a challenge. But uh, that was complicated then the last about two and a half, three weeks now. Uh, I've come down with this upper respiratory infection of some sort uh, to a point there where I really couldn't talk uh, without coughing and going into coughing fits. Uh, I will do my best to try to avoid that uh, during this during the show today. Um, uh, certainly uh, going to do my best to, you know, drink so but try not to be too loud so that way you don't hear me uh, do my best to edit as much of it out as I can uh, that being said um, once again it's great to be back and this is a really special show and, and this was a show that I had really had sort of planned on doing uh, you know, a couple weeks back now almost uh, but November 1st of this year was uh, the first anniversary of uh, the web of conspiracy on Spreaker so i just really wanted to take a lot of the first part of the show discussing the show uh, in terms of where it's come from and where I'm going with it. And I wanted to really take a lot of time just to thank each and every one of you who have listened to the show, who continue to support the show, uh, as well as a number of you who reached out to me uh, during the show's absence. Uh, you know, hey, where are you at? What's going on? Um, uh, you know, I, I personally, I... I I was really uh, touched to get those those messages and and to see that okay you know what it, people were concerned they wanted more of the show they didn't know what was going on so it's great to know that something that you love to do and something you put forth a degree of effort in doing uh, that that people respond to it and uh, and when you don't release that when you don't produce that you know, it's nice to know that you're missed right <laughs> for lack of a better way of describing it so. It's really great to be back, and this, like I said, this is a really special show. Uh, when I think about where the show has 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 come from, it's this is a really good show, and it's a really great show uh, to really take some time to think about and discuss where it's come from and where it's going. But once again, my apologies for the for the absence and you know, this upper respiratory respiratory infection. I, I'm still at, the, I believe, the tail end of this thing. Uh, it, it's certainly taken a lot out of me, uh, and uh, hopefully I don't sound too bad. But it, it's it's taken a lot out of me, so I, I'm doing my best to to put together a show because it's been too long, and and uh, I really needed to get some new content and just get some stuff out here for you guys. So uh, once again, uh, thank you to all those who um, you know reached out to me, and uh, I do appreciate that. So a year later, the web of conspiracy. Well. I, I really, I know that some people are probably not going to be too thrilled about me taking the time to do this, but for the amount of effort and time and energy I put into this, I think it's important that I reflect back, and I really want to do that with the audience because it's because of you guys that I still do this. Um, the year that I had, you know, when I when I first started the show on the network, I was in the midst of battling cancer. Um, I'd already had, I think at that point, just finished my second surgery. Uh, and was uh, knew that I had at least one more that I was going to have to go through. Um, knew that I may have more after that, and didn't really know whether or not chemo or radiation were going to be things that I would need to be concerned about at that point. It was still very early in, in my treatment, so really unsure of what my future was a year ago at this time. So to be here a year later, you know having survived this battle with cancer being in overall aside from this little last couple of weeks being in very good physical health maybe slightly elevated blood pressure but aside from that um to be in, in to have the state of well-being that i have a year a year later to still be able to do this show it's remarkable it's been an amazing experience all of it and all the ups and the downs it, it, it's to have had this happen alongside the show. Uh, I, I hope that it that I I have 
offered a sense of encouragement for others out there. And I've hoped that I offered some sort of, of, you know, okay, you know, normalcy, you know, always finding a way to, to move forward, uh, no matter what. And so having had this show, this show really was a part of my recovery. It, and, and while it's always something that I've been interested in doing, and I did this in an, on another network in another form before, um, but to be able to do the show, have my vision, and be able to go through what I went through while doing it, it's been a remarkable experience. And to have, uh, I had a lot of you reach out to me and wish me well, especially early in my treatment. And it was encouraging. It was very encouraging. And, and yes, you know, I'm grateful for the support of my family and, 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 and everything they brought me through. It, it's meant a lot. So this is for my family and this is for all of you who continue to support the show. For you new listeners who are just jumping in, um, I really just wanted to take some time to discuss the last year's journey. Um, when I started this show last November... I, 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 when I think about the number of people who listened, um, the number of people I had for the entire month of November, the number of people who listened to the show for the entire month of November is the same amount of people I get in one day now. And that, to me, is remarkable. Uh, the show has grown, I think, tenfold. Ten, I, I haven't done the exact math, but it's like 10 to 15 times the, 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 the listenership that I had in a year's time. It's remarkable. And along this journey that I've taken and, and knew that, uh, that I would be going through these procedures and going through all of these things along with it, um, not really knowing where it was going to take me, uh, remarkable for me. And... Uh, I can't, I can't imagine, you know, not having had this to help keep me focused, to help keep me thinking about other things. Um, some dark times, you know, when you don't know, uh, what's going to happen of you, it, it, when you begin to wonder about your mortality and you question, uh, am I going to be here for my family? How much longer am I going to be around? Uh, and Yes, my type of cancer is treatable, but um, melanoma is also the deadliest skin cancer, and it does kill people, and it is the fastest growing cancer in the world. So yes, for me, it is it it it, it was and still is a very scary thing. Um, so to having gone through all that that experience and to see the show grow with me, it's been amazing. So. Things really ratcheted really for me in January. That also happened to be the time of my last surgery, but the show then was picked up on Stitcher Radio, which uh, I, I, I owe them a tremendous thanks because the number of listeners I get through Stitcher now, um, I've been able to reach much bigger audience than I ever anticipated, really. I really didn't know. I really didn't know what I was going to get. Uh, I knew that I wasn't going to have a lot of money to put out there to advertise. I still don't. Um, but to have the, the outlets on Spreaker to be able to listen on demand, to be able to release the podcast via iTunes, which I know well, most of you at this point, I believe, still listen via the podcast, and that's fantastic. Um, but then, you know, to be able to add Stitcher to that and, and the creation of the YouTube channel, even though Google and YouTube have given me a great deal of frustration in recent uh, weeks, um, it, it, it's still... Uh, another tremendous avenue so i guess i really didn't know how much bigger the show would grow and starting off as just a hobby something to keep me going has become something a little bit bigger than i thought it would and i owe that to you i owe that to my family uh, so i owe a tremendous thank you um and if i had anything i could give i certainly would but i do not at this point in time um when I look at the number of people who listen to me, you know, my initial thought was, you know, I, I know it's the internet, so I know I could get some people maybe overseas, you know, other than the United States that would listen. Um, but yes, yeah, so most of my listeners come from the U S but I, 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 it's amazing to me to see how many people listen in the UK, of course, Canada, but in Australia, but not only that, but in, you know, France, Denmark, Sweden, Costa Rica. Uh, and that's just to name a few. I, I 
all over the globe. People listen to the show. Uh, that's amazing. It's amazing to think about just how far the technology can take you. So, you know, for me, um, it's really invigorating to see that there's people who really actually want to hear what I have to say. Uh, you know, you, you talk about some of these things with your family and friends, and you know, they hear about it, and they hear you all the time, and it's sort of like, okay. But then to know that, oh, okay, well, I've got thousands of people who listen to me because they they want my take on these items or they want to hear what it is that I'm going to talk about this week. So for me, it is absolutely amazing. And uh, it's been one of the brighter spots in what has been a roller coaster of a year. You know, I look at the cities across the, the globe, Adelaide, Australia, okay, Toronto, Canada, San Jose, Costa Rica, um, you know, London, Ontario, Canada, London, England, okay, Los Angeles, Seattle, Chicago, uh, and, and of course my, my future home, which for those of you who listen to me on the old network and listen to me past my, my future home of Albuquerque, which I traveled out there last summer, not this summer, but, but the last summer before in 2013, and absolutely fell in love with, with New Mexico. Um, just an amazing place. This, uh, I, I, I know it's not for everybody, but for me, uh, uh, I fell in love with the ABQ. So uh, I, I have every intention of making that my future home one day. And so it was really great to see um, a lot of people listen to me from, you know, from there. So this has been an amazing experience. And that's why I've taken you know, this, this first part of the show, uh, which I'm sure not everybody's thrilled with, but to really talk about where the show is, has gone. And not only that, where I plan to go from here. What 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 is next for the show? Well, I certainly want to continue to expand and grow the show. I want to reach as many people as possible. And if I can do something with the show, if I can make this my 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 way of living, I would be thrilled. Uh, I don't know if that's the case. And, and that was never certainly my goal, but now it's looking like it might be something I might be able to do. Um, I have every intention of continuing to do a lot of what I've already done, you know, continue to explore the same topics. And yes, I'm still going to get into some of those that maybe aren't as popular. Civic engagement is a, a, a personal issue of mine and and something I am going to do shows on occasionally. Uh, certainly talking about international affairs is something I'm going to continue to do. Um, by all means, uh, I, I think it's important that, that people get news and not just from the mainstream media, which for the most part I have very little respect for, as those of you who have been listening certainly know. Um, going forward, I, I hope to be able to bring some more guests on the show. I have a couple ideas in mind of some other people I want to line up. So by all means, uh, you know, I, I, I had a fantastic interview with Jared Gardner. It certainly was a longer show than I normally produce, but I really wanted to get his content out there. Uh, but I have every intention of adding more guests as I go. Uh, I also, when I when I when I had decided to create a show like this, one of the biggest draws for me in doing this was getting an avenue out there for people who don't have a way of discussing these strange and unusual things. They don't feel comfortable. Okay, uh, an, another outlet out there. I really, the thing that I've always been fascinated by, and I know other shows do this, so it's not anything that's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not reinventing the wheel here, but I think the, the fascinating thing is getting personal accounts from the average person, things that they can't understand. Uh, I, I, to me, those have always been the most interesting stories, and uh, I, I, they, they resonate with me just because of experiences that I had as, as, a, as, a, as a child growing up things that I couldn't understand, things that I couldn't explain. So by all means, uh, you know, I, I saw this as an avenue, and I really want to be able to do that with this show. I want to give that to the audience, and I hope to be able to expand that and uh, you know, maybe even perhaps you know, either do an additional show or do another segment of the show where I dedicate some time to that. Either way, I, I really want to make that a focus going forward with the show. And I really hope that those of you who have been listening will continue uh, supporting the show, continue being uh, a part of it. Uh, I love your feedback. It, 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 no matter, and look, I, I love constructive criticism. So by all means, uh, look, I, I prefer you not, you know, degrade me, <laughs> but I, I certainly welcome getting constructive feedback on 
what you think I could do differently. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to take your opinion. <laughs> doesn't mean I'm going to follow your advice, but I like getting the feedback because if there is something that I can fix, if there is something I can improve, uh, and, and that's certainly the case with show topics, you do 40 shows in a year, you find that you cover a lot of the same stuff. You kind of circle back, and I'm okay with that to a degree, but I also love getting some new things, things that I haven't come across, things that I haven't discussed um, to be able to research. And I've gotten some fantastic topics from the audience, and I'm going to continue to uh, explore suggestions by the audience. I think it's tremendous. So thank you for those of you who have contributed to the, to the show uh, because it, it does – Add a dynamic, I believe. I, uh, even though I can look at the, st the stats and I can see, okay, these are the most popular shows. Okay, it doesn't necessarily mean that that I don't like getting the the, the written words back from people. Okay, you know that this is this was a topic I liked a little bit better. That's fantastic. I love getting that feedback. So please continue uh, when you can to offer me your feedback. I welcome it. So now for the rest of the show, uh, as I stated, uh, you know, I, I, I've been ill, so I haven't been able to go and, and, and delve into a lot of the main topics or get into uh, you know, half an hour of one particular topic. But there was a few news items that really got my attention, so I really wanted to take some time to get into those at least a little bit and, and go from there. Now... For those of you who've been listening to me, at least going back into August, uh, you, and, and I think maybe even as early as July, uh, in talking about the, the Ebola crisis. Now, it appears that perhaps we've at least contained it, uh, hopefully. Um, I stated then and I state now that we need to be cautious but not panicky. And I think for the most part, many people have maintained that. I think that uh, no, no reason to panic with this, but I do believe that we need to maintain a degree of caution. And if anything, the CDC confirmed everything that I have said about it. Uh, when you look at what happened to those nurses in Dallas that treated Mr. Duncan, uh, the CDC, they followed CDC protocol and they still contracted it. So that tells me the CDC really didn't know 100% what they were dealing with. They really weren't sure. That confirmed everything I needed to know about how in control and how informed the CDC really was in the situation. They weren't. So it definitely reaffirms my lack of faith in that government institution. That being said, there are some things that we do know about this virus and why we continue to need to be cautious is that um, we haven't contained all the outbreaks in Africa and that still needs to be something that's done in, in West Africa. But not only that, this virus has mutated in the past. Odds are it will do so again. And I know there's a number of health experts out there who are claiming, look, it's not going to, it's not going to, it's not going to, it's not likely, it's not likely. It has already done it once. It can do it again. The virus may be a very simple life form, but the prerogative of most any life form, at least those who aren't human and clinically depressed or have some sort of mental illness, the prerogative is to live. It is a, it is a driving desire to find a way to survive. And this virus will do that, and it will find ways. It will become adaptable. It already is a fairly adaptable virus. It will find ways to continue to survive. So that being said, we do need to continue to be cautious when it comes to how well we believe we have this contained. And this will be something that we'll continue to have to deal with going forward, uh, particularly once every, you know, whenever a new outbreak occurs. This will definitely be have to, to be something that we continue to be very diligent in terms of precautions. Now, earlier I had mentioned uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, I affectionately call my future home. Uh, I came across a story, uh, it was, I believe it was the week of Halloween, uh, about uh, a potentially supernatural paranormal type of incident that occurred there. Now, in, in the South Valley in Albuquerque, they do this annual festival um, in which they burn this Mexican boogeyman known as El Cucuy. Now, what the, you know people would do is they would, in this, this giant effigy of this sort of boogeyman-looking type of thing, Okay, uh, 
people write down their fears and then they stuff it into this effigy and they light it on fire to cleanse the fears, to burn them all away. Okay. And what happened during this festival is really bizarre. Um, a firefighter, and there was people there taking pictures and, and recording, but a firefighter had taken a few pictures and a couple of these pictures above the crowd, maybe uh, 20 feet above, above, there's this ghostly like image of what looks to be some sort of boogeyman type figure. Uh, many people maybe would refer to him as a hat man. Okay. This looks like he's, he's dressed in some sort of trench coat with a hand in the air and then wearing this wide brimmed hat. Uh, it, it, very bizarre picture. You now, some people will postulate that perhaps this is a lens flare from the camera. Uh, others have said, well, maybe, just maybe, this is you know someone playing an elaborate hoax with a high-end projector. Uh, perhaps that's the case. I'm not sure. What I do know is that it's a compelling picture. I'm no photography expert, but it's pretty crazy. So uh, I'm going to post links after I've uh, released the show. Uh, for you to take a look at and see for yourself. Judge for yourself what you make of this. Interesting? Uh, definitely. I don't know. Very creepy. If Look, if it's, really, if it's real, then obviously the timing of burning a boogeyman in an effigy and then this ghostly boogeyman appears, that's kind of creepy. Uh, however, it also would make it a prime time to create a type of hoax. So... I'll post those links up to uh, Albuquerque News Station. Uh, KRQE had uh, posted this on their website. I'll post those links up, and you can take a look for yourself and judge for yourself. So, nevertheless, pretty interesting. So you decide. Now, uh, another item that caught my attention, uh, and this is one I'm a little late to the party to, uh, uh, you know, having been ill, but uh, it's the story of Boyd Bushman. Now, uh, this YouTube video uh, surfaced in October uh, of Boyd giving what is basically believed to be a deathbed con uh, confession in August of this year that he was a Lockheed Martin engineer and that he had proof of human contact with extraterrestrials. He presented pictures of this humanoid type of entity. Um, he uh, Claimed to have had you know contact about you know with aliens from Area 51 and Roswell. Uh, described these aliens as being about uh, four and a half to five feet tall. Uh, claimed they had you know three backbones, uh, made of cartilage. They could communicate telepathically. Very similar claims to what we've seen with some other people who have you know claimed uh, they've come in contact with uh, aliens from Roswell and that kind of thing. Now. Uh, Interestingly enough, this, this image that is shown, that he provides, it looks like, and many have claimed that, look, this is an alien he's holding, this, this is a toy that you can buy at Walmart. So, uh, how authentic is this? Was this all elaborately staged? I don't know. Um, there are others who claim that they can't confirm whether definitively that this is Boyd Bushman in the video. So there's a great deal of, of controversy surrounding it. There are some who are very staunchly supporting this video. There are others who are very adamant that this is a hoax. And I, I've heard people come down on both sides of this. Um, you know, once again, I usually try to uh, relegate my opinion uh, unless it's something I'm very passionate about or something I definitively have an experience with, um, I can't say whether or not this is a legit video. I've watched the video myself. Um, I don't know. I really don't know what to make of it. And, and by all means, I, I also post a link to this video up as well. And you can watch the video if you haven't already uh, and decide for yourself whether or not you believe it to be true. As I stated, this, this, this image, this picture of this alien, the supposed alien that Mr. Bushman presents, uh, apparently others have claimed you can buy this thing at Walmart. So if that's the case, well, then you have to certainly question the veracity of this video. Nevertheless, I'll leave it up for you to decide whether or not uh, you think this is a legit story or not. I I'm not sure. Um, you know, the claims are there. I mean, people have been making these claims about 
extraterrestrials and you know recovered from Roswell or those in Area 51 and they can communicate telepathically and they look like the these green men you know that that are so stereotyped throughout Hollywood now um maybe there's something to this maybe not maybe this is just somebody else trying to cash in um you know maybe I, I, it's hard to say I don't know I don't know enough about the individuals who released it to be able to make any kind of character statements or judgments about those individuals. Uh, I tried to refrain from that anyways. Nevertheless, um, I, I don't know. Uh, I've, as I stated, I've watched the video. Um, it, Boyd seems to be honest. Uh, that being said, I, I'm not a human lie detector. So uh, this could all just be one elaborate hoax. Nevertheless, I guess, as I stated with the other article, I will post a link to the video, and you can watch for yourself. I think it's about a half hour long, if I remember right. It's about a half hour of your time. Um, nevertheless, it, 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 it might be something, you know, for those of you who want to believe, you're going to believe, uh, no matter what. Now, I, I think I, I, being of the X-Files generation that I am, uh, by all means, yes, I... I I, I've seen some things I can't explain. I want to believe that we are not the only living uh, beings in the universe. I have every reason to believe that there's other life form out there. Uh, science essentially backs that up. How intelligent it is, how capable it is of traveling here, I don't know. Um, nevertheless, there, there's some you know, remarkable possibilities uh i had recently watched the movie interstellar uh and for, by the way pretty good movie you know matthew mcconaughey okay maybe you could have done a little better at, at any rate and certainly there's some plot holes and some logic issues but it's a compelling uh, movie in terms of thinking about humanity and 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 where our place is in the universe uh it definitely makes you think it makes you think about the possibilities um, and perhaps this is true. Perhaps these beings are out there. Uh, I have stated in the past that I, I, I tend to think perhaps the, that, you know, we're looking more at maybe dimensional beings. Um, nevertheless, uh, this video, check it out and you can make your own judgments from there. Now, one of the other uh, little pieces here that I want to talk about is just this day. Um, you know, we uh, the Rosetta um, lander, okay, uh, landed on this comet. I, I comet sixty seven P, and it's a, a very Russian um, comet. So uh, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce the name. It's not an easily pronounceable name, but they successfully landed this. Uh, you know, the satellite on the comet and who knows what kind of information we'll get back from this uh, it could be tremendous um, value to the scientific community but what i think was one of the more interesting pieces that i came across on this particular story was released i believe just yesterday uh, and it's it's audio of a singing they call it the singing comet where this making this really odd sound now uh, once again, this is another thing I'll post a link up to, but what I think is most interesting about this particular um, audio is that if you list, if you've ever seen the M. Night uh, Shyamalan movie Signs, uh, they use, it, 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 it's an interesting movie, I, I've, I'm a bit of a fan of the movie, that being said, they use these baby monitors, starts picking up and walkie talkies picking up this strange signal. Uh, which supposedly are these alien craft communicating. Well, this sound that this comet is making sounds a lot like that same sound from signs. It is very peculiar. Uh, I, I can't be the only person who's, who's thought this by hearing it. So um, when you listen to it, it, it it's, it's pretty wild. It's, it's pretty remarkable. It sounds like, it sounds just like, the sound from signs it, it's interesting it's it's un, it's unique and and scientists believe it, it it's has to do with the magnetic field uh that it's making this sound um 
So nevertheless, it's interesting. It's certainly intriguing, and I'll leave it up to you to decide whether or not it's alien communication or not. I don't know, but it's a bizarre. Nevertheless, it's remarkable what we've been able to accomplish technologically uh, to, to the point now where we're landing, you know, landing devices on moving comets and gathering data from it. Absolutely amazing to me. Just absolutely amazing. So when you think about where we are in, in, in the whole big scheme of things, it's a remarkable world we live in. It's a remarkable set of opportunities that are out there for us. And I think about you know where I'm going to go with the show and, and the future of the show. It, it's, there's a tremendous future in terms of all these different things and these findings that we're going to discover in the next 20, 30 years, even shorter, five years from now. Um, it's amazing how far we've come. Uh, that being said, the thing that I think that we need to make sure that we maintain a degree of, 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 of uh, in touching, you know, in touch with is the explorer in, in us. I mean, if anything I take away from the, the, the interstellar movie, it's that mankind, we have always been explorers of some degree. We've always been explorers. That has been the thing that has kept us going. We explore new places, new land, new things. Uh, and while that explorer mentality has brought with it its own degree and own sets of difficulties and troubles, it, it has been the thing that has motivated us and has kept us going. Uh, exploring space, exploring Earth, exploring the seas, whatever, the, exploring other dimensions. Um, we cannot lose sight of that within us. And, and by all means, we, we should not allow certain restrictions and certain restrictive devices keeping us to keep us from exploring. Just because you don't have a PhD in astrophysics doesn't mean you shouldn't explore it. Does it mean that you're going to understand everything? Maybe not, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't make an effort. You know, I look at this show and I think this is an opportunity for me to explore all kinds of things I never would have, or perhaps wouldn't have explored as, as in depth as I do now. Uh, we are explorers at heart and we need to remember that whether it's the human body and all the endless possibilities we have of eliminating disease, eliminating cancer, uh, all these different things that we can do. Um, it's tremendous. And, and whether you believe in, 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 in higher power, whether or not you're atheist, whatever the case may be, you, you have to look at the world that we live in and acknowledge that we have come incredibly far as, as human beings. And, whether we've done it on our own accord or we've done it with other help, either from higher powers or in some cases, extraterrestrial beings, uh, it's amazing. And it's where we can go from here could be even greater. So my parting message for today's episode, for this week's episode, is to not lose that explorer in all of us. When we were young and we were learning this, this, this brand new world, to us and we were learning all these things don't stop seeking answers you know, that's why I did this show I, I wanted to seek out and wanted to share and wanted to find other people's stories uh, for me this is my exploration for you it could be the oceans the ocean depths which are barely charted it could be the fourth and fifth dimensions Maybe some of the others, you know, the physicists you know, argue that perhaps there's eight, maybe ten dimensions. Harnessing those could unlock the secrets of the universe. Could unlock space travel in ways that we didn't think 20, 30 years ago were possible. There is tremendous potential, and we just have to remember to to find that within each and every one of us. So, once again, thank you for the last year of this show. Thank you for all of your support. Um, thank you for your feedback. It has meant a tremendous amount to me over this past year. 
in a year that has seen so many ups and downs for me. I cannot thank you enough for continuing to listen to the show. It means so much. And thank you to my family for continuing to support this crazy show of mine um, and the time that it does take. So, once again, thank you, and I'll be back with you next week. (laughs) 